Welcome to Drive Your Business, the YouTube channel where we make content for marketers, business owners, and entrepreneurs. I'm your host and co-founder of Drive Creative Agency, Corey Barkach, and in this episode, we're gonna give you five tips to building your brand. Now, the first tip is really, really just high level, but number one, you wanna make sure that your brand's consistent. According to Forbes, having a consistent brand across all your platforms can actually increase your sales up to 23%. In addition to this, 64% of consumers said that they bought from a brand because it was consistent and matched up with their core values. So when you're creating your voice and your message, you wanna think about who your target audience is and what they care about and to make them the hero in your advertising. Remember, your product's about them. It's not about you or how great you are. Your product is about how it's gonna help them and why they should spend money on it. So when creating a consistent brand, first you wanna create a brand guideline, okay? And a brand guideline is gonna make sure that your entire identity of your brand and your voice of your brand is tight. It's gonna go through your different logo lockups, the proper usages and improper usages of your logo, the color palette and schemes that you're gonna use with your brand, the proper type, your mission statement, your core values, all these things are gonna be assembled to your brand guideline before you make any changes to your identity in the real world. I don't mean to be short about a brand guideline, but we can make a whole video about it because it gets so in depth. If you have more questions about making a brand guideline, feel free to add a comment below or contact us direct on our website. We'd be happy to talk to you and walk you through that process. Now, after your brand is tightened up, it's time to make sure that it is tight on all platforms that people can see. And this is gonna include your website, your blogs, your email marketing, your sales collateral, I don't care if it's a water bottle, a pen, a tchotchke, a golf ball, whatever, your brand needs to be tight everywhere now. And the reason it needs to be tight everywhere is that so people recognize it, and when they see it, they know it's you. Tip number two in building a brand in 2020, start a blog. Now blogging's not new, but it's a really great way to get your opinion out there and position your company or yourself as a thought leader in your space. Now the first step in starting a blog is coming up with a really, really specific name. For example, if you're gonna write a blog on fishing, that's not really unique. A lot of people blog about fishing. But if you're a deep sea fisherman in South Carolina and that's your expertise, then make your name relate to deep sea fishing in South Carolina. And you might even get as specific as deep sea fishing for barracudas. I don't know if they have those in South Carolina, but you get what I'm saying. You want to get as specific as possible with your name and with the theme of the content. And the reason for this is you're looking to capture a niche group, a niche audience. So how is this applicable to, let's say, a manufacturing company? I have nothing to do with fishing. Well, your manufacturing company's blog name can relate to your exact expertise in what you do. So for example, you might be a manufacturing company that notices that there's a big need in the autonomous car market. Now, while you're also servicing other big brands like GM, Ford, Chrysler, there's a huge opportunity for you in the smaller startup companies, the Tesla types, right? The, the electric cars, the autonomous cars. So from a digital standpoint, starting a blog and writing about all the advantages of having um, you know, electric cars and the future of electric cars and what the trends are and how to engineer properly to achieve the best results, all these things. If you start positioning yourself as a thought leader in that market, then you're gonna start building a brand online to that community that they can find you. After you have a name for your blog, it's obviously important that you get a website set up that has blog functionality. Um, if you don't already have this, WordPress is a really great option for blogging. Uh, WordPress has a content management system and it's built around blog functionality where you can customize your templates, right? And then on the back end, it's really easy just to add blogs. It's literally an add a blog button, basically. Your next step is to do some keyword research on the topics of the blogs that you're gonna write. And you can do this by going to Google Trends. Now, Google Trends is a site that showcases the search traffic and search volume for certain keywords online. Let's say you wanna write a blog about social media marketing. Now, that's a pretty vast subject, but you might go on Google Trends and notice that Instagram Stories 2020 is trending like wildfire. Well, this might be a great time to write a blog about Instagram stories in 2020 and capitalize on all that interest from what people are actually trying to find. That way, people are looking for your blog and they don't even know who you are yet. How awesome is that? Now, once you've done your keyword research, right? You got your name for your channel, you've got a title for your blog, and you know your first blog that you're gonna write, what it's gonna be about because you've done the research and you know what's trending. It's time to actually start writing. There's really not an exact word count on how long your blog should be. 
The most important thing is that you get as detailed as possible within your blog. For example, let's go back to fishing, right? If you're writing a blog about how to catch marlins, okay, and you say, just use this lure. Well, that's not super informative. However, if you found a really great lure online that you have great experience in catching marlins right, and you teach your, your people who are reading the blog on different places that they could buy that lure with links to those different resources. You can give them different depths on how deep they should be fishing with that lure. You can give reviews on the type of different, um, different line you're using with that lure, how to tie the lure, you know, any other accessories that should be utilized with the lure, other alternatives to that lure that maybe that lure is not available to them, they should be using a different one. Maybe the different types of lures that they could be using in different seasons. If you get super granular in how to teach that person how to catch a marlin, then it's gonna be recognized by your readers and it's gonna be recognized by Google as high quality content. So you really, what I'm saying is you just wanna get as in depth as possible about the subject that you're trying to write about and make sure you explain it thoroughly, okay? It's much better to have a quality blog versus a million blogs that are, that are light and don't have a lot of substance. Now when you're writing your blog, you also wanna consider the SEO value of your blog, okay? Um, if you're using WordPress, there's a great plugin called SEO Yoast that can help you with this process. SEO Yoast is gonna give you instructions to fill out title tags, alt tags, meta descriptions, and other things that are gonna help you index and search. So make sure you do a little bit of research on SEO best practices before you write your blog. People hear SEO and they think that you have to be some kind of digital wizard or some kind of you know, tech guy or something like that. There are principles that you can use as somebody who's never blogged before to increase your chances of ranking in search. It just takes time. Now that you have your blog written, it's time to start promoting it. You can send out a opt-in email to your entire email list through Ch MailChimp for people to sign up for your blog. And then they'll receive notifications every time that you post a new blog since you're gonna be sending it to them through MailChimp. You can also promote your blog on your Facebook page and you can do this on your personal page or on your business page. You can promote it on LinkedIn. Think of all the places where you can potentially share this blog and take advantage of that, okay? Don't just share it in one place. This is evergreen content. You should share it everywhere. And I highly suggest that you create some kind of subscribe button within your blog so that when people are done reading it, they have a chance to subscribe and be notified the next time that you publish your blog. That way you can start building an audience that's interested in coming back to your website. So this not only helps obviously your company and having people be more familiar with your brand, but having more people return to your website more frequently can actually help your overall search value with Google and get you to rank higher. Tip number two, start a YouTube channel. First, you wanna make sure that you have a regular posting schedule that you can commit to, okay? There's not really a right day to do this, you can do it on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It doesn't matter. Just have a consistent day that you're gonna be uh, pushing your content. Make sure you have a call to action in your videos, right? Make sure you're asking your users to subscribe to your channel and also make sure that you have an active subscribe button on your channel so users can easily subscribe and that the next time you post a video, they'll automatically be notified. Now, a very, very, very important factor in ranking on YouTube is the length of your video. Right? So obviously you gotta make quality content so people will watch your video, but it has to be long enough. YouTube recommends that your video is at least 10 to 15 minutes long. If your video is not long enough, it's just not going to rank as well. Now, similar to blogging, you wanna do some keyword research on the actual title of your YouTube video. Um, YouTube doesn't have like an official tool right now to do keyword research within their platform, but the same as before, you can use Google Trends to figure out um, what people are searching for, and that data will be relevant to YouTube as well. You can also go to the top search bar on YouTube and start typing in phrases and see what pops up. And what pops up at the top is gonna be in the most popular uh, search terms. For example, if you were to go into YouTube right now and you type in Fortnite, right? Uh, at the top, it's gonna say Fortnite season 11, Fortnite event, and then Fortnite chapter two. So if you're making a video about Fortnite for whatever reason, you would want your YouTube uh, your YouTube title to relate to one of those top three search terms for Fortnite, as people are searching for that the most often. And it automatically queries up there, so people are actually gonna click on it. Another good tip is to find other YouTube creators in your vertical, in your industry, and reference their video within the title of your video. For example, if your target market's entrepreneurs, a great person to follow would be Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, you know, if he, he just put out a video called Best Instagram Practices of 2020. So in response to that, you could put together a video that says Best Instagram Practices of 2020, my 
uh, my take on Gary Vaynerchuk's um, advice on the subject or whatever, right? And then so when people are searching for Gary Vaynerchuk or for that video, you have an opportunity to pop up since your title is similar to that search. And then your video can give your own twist on Instagram stories in 2020 and you can start building your own audience. Now, another important thing to do is to create a playlist within your YouTube channel and you can do this through your, uh, through your YouTube page. Uh, the reason that we suggest doing this is that when somebody is watching your video um, and they are finished with it, if they wanna watch the next video, they can just hit next and it'll go to the next video in your playlist. That way you can keep more viewers engaged with your brand longer and you get more watch time since that's important to YouTube search. And make sure these videos don't just use, live on YouTube. You can take these videos and share them on LinkedIn. You can share them on Facebook. You can uh, share short clips on Instagram and try to drive more traffic to your, to your uh, YouTube channel by inserting a link. You can put them on your website, do email marketing. Make sure you're sharing these videos everywhere just like you would share your blog everywhere so you can get more traffic to your YouTube channel, you can get more watch time, and you can get more subscribers. Now our third tip for uh, building a brand in 2020 is simply getting users back to your website more often. So getting people back to your website can be tricky. Um, I definitely suggest that you have new featured sessions on your website so that people will just want to come back to your website organically. So keep making sure that you're um, updating your, your blog consistently, maybe updating the content on your homepage. Um, you know, if you're an e-commerce store, always running some kind of ex you know specials. Maybe you have a, a monthly um, special that you run on the first day of every month, or maybe you have a weekly special that you always run on Wednesdays. Coming up with creative ways to get people to come back organically is definitely gonna be very valuable because then you're not spending any money to get that traffic. You're just marketing your business. Obviously too, taking a look at your Google Analytics. Um, if you don't have Google Analytics set up, I definitely um, recommend getting that set up. You don't have to do a, a super deep dive into it to start understanding it, but at least having that set up and looking at your, your bounce rates and your behavior flow with your users and starting to determine and understand, hey, is my website built in a way that's easy for people to navigate, or do I have like a really high, you know, 75% bounce rate where people are just finding my site and leaving it? Is that because the image at the top is, is not done right, or, or what might that be? But doing an audit on your site to figure out why people aren't staying at your site as long as you'd like them to, or maybe why they're not clicking through to the pages you want them to, would be really helpful because if somebody comes to your site the first time and they have a bad impression, it's kind of them like coming to your business storefront and having a bad impression or, or eating out and not enjoying their food or being treated rudely. People aren't gonna come back if they don't feel like they're taken care of. So at, at a basic level, you wanna make sure that you do an audit of your site and make sure that you're providing the best uh, user experience possible. Another way to get users back to your website is to send them uh, push notifications. There's a lot of great opt-in tools out there that can give visitors on your website the option to receive post notifications to uh, when you'd like them to. For example, if you're posting specials on your site or things like that. So make sure that you have an opt-in push notification um, uh, option set up in your website. Not everyone's gonna wanna receive post notifications, but some people will. Um, and it's definitely powerful if you have their information so that you can do so. Another great way to get people back to your website is to create a Facebook Messenger bot. Um, one resource for this is ManyChat. Uh, there's other resources that can help you in creating a Facebook Messenger bot, but this is basically a bot that can um, automatically respond to your audience and help get people back to your website and send them messages. It's a very popular tool. Another way you can get people back to your website is by using a mail service like MailChimp and sending them content for new offers. Now, nobody wants to receive a thousand emails a day. That's super annoying. But sending your audience an email here and there, maybe once a week, whether it's even an offer, maybe it's new blog value-added content, maybe it's eBooks, maybe it's white papers. If you have that data and they've opted in for email list already, it's really important that you be driving that traffic back to your website. The reason you wanna keep getting people back to your website so often is the more often they're on your site, the more likely they are to buy from you and they become familiar with your brand. And our last tip to building your brand in 2020 is make sure you're responding to your audience. If you look at all the great marketers, for example, Neil Patel on YouTube, if you go on Neil Patel's YouTube channel right now and look at all the people that have engaged and commented on his page, I don't know if it's actually him responding, but every single one of those comments, thousands of comments, get a response from Neil Patel. The reason he does this is because he's trying to build a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with his entire following. And that's really what social media is about. It's about building personal relationships with people. And it's not just about commenting on the people that comment to you first, right? So 
it is totally acceptable for you to jump in in other conversations. For example, let's say you're in the professional services industry and you see a great article that's written on, let's, let's say artificial intelligence, and that relates to your business. So go find that article and read it, right? And then comment below with all the other people that are commenting your take on it, right? Maybe give kudos to the writer, say, hey, this is awesome. Uh, did you ever think about this as well? Wow, this is such a cool trend. I don't know anything about it. Whatever, artificial intelligence, cool, awesome. My whole point is you're becoming part of this conversation, right? It's just like being at a bar. I mean, you're not just gonna sit at the bar and just keep your arms folded and look down to the ground and expect people to talk to you. No, you gotta, you gotta socialize with people if you wanna make friends, man, you know what I mean? And it's the same thing on social media. You gotta jump in that conversation and start commenting and connecting with people and responding to people. You gotta be active. It can't just be posting all the time. You have to jump into other people's articles and give them kudos and comment and share. Now, if you don't have the time yourself to comment on every single or respond to every single comment that you get on social media, then hire somebody to do it, right? Hire a community manager that can go in and give and create pre-canned responses. Like if somebody comments like, hey, awesome, great video content, I love it, then have like 10 different canned responses that are approved by you that that person can, can use to answer. And if a problem arises, like if you offend somebody or somebody, you get whatever, somebody just dogging your page or like being a troll or whatever, um, you know, that community manager, like, that can be a flag to them to bring it to you. And then on a case by case scenario, you can decide what you want to do with those kinds of, of, uh, of responses. Also super important, which is like really, really transparent now is your Google, uh, Google business page. If somebody types in your Google name, uh, your Google business page pops up like right next to the first rank and everybody can see all the reviews that, that are on your page. So if you're getting positive reviews, comment thank you. Like, thanks for doing business with me. Thanks for the great review. If you're getting negative reviews, make sure that you're commenting as well so that you can amend that situation. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world to get a bad review, but a bad review that it's not responded to just seems like it's ignored and everybody can see it. So overall, guys, our biggest advice on building a brand in 2020 is just to be active, be consistent, and make sure that you're executing. These are just a few different ways that you can start building your brand, and there's hundreds of other ways that you can do it. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. We'll be putting out more content here shortly. Also, you can visit our website at www.drivecreativeagency.com where we have our own blog and we author blog content. You can sign up for that there. I really appreciate you guys watching this whole video. If, you, if you'd like, comment below. I will respond to all comments um, and, and have a great day, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you next time.